Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another MTG Arena video. In today's video, I'm going to be playing some standard using my Jeskai Winota deck. So this deck focuses all around one card, that being Winota, and basically what it wants to do is create a bunch of non-humans while still having a decent amount of humans in the deck that Winota can pull and free cast. The biggest target here is Agent of Treachery and Hakdos, and generally the deck is very powerful. It's still in a somewhat unrefined state but it still has helped me climb the ladder really quickly, and I honestly expect Winota to get banned. So, I, if you can build this deck without spending any other wild cards besides Winota, I recommend doing it, because she's going to end up getting banned. So don't build this deck if you're missing a bunch of the other cards. Also, by the way, if you're missing any of the other cards, you can replace them with any other non-human creature generators. Uh, the best ones are humans that generate non-humans, but really anything that generates non-humans can replace any of those slots. Deck list, the deck list will be in the description down below, along with all of the other decks I am doing for Ikoria. So check that out in the description down below. Why don't we jump right into the gameplay? Alright, so getting into this first game, you'll see here that generally this deck wants to win really fast, and this honestly isn't that bad of a hand, but I don't have Winota in it. So I decide to mulligan, and I end up with Winota. Now, Agent of Treachery isn't a great card in my hand, and I honestly can't generate that many non-humans, but I do manage to pull all set of Life's Bounty, which is very good, because it is a non-human that can also protect Winota if it needs to. I know a lot of people who don't run the card in this deck, but I think it works really well. Now, here we're also apparently playing it's a somewhat fast deck. Um, I really can't tell from now, from here, but uh, it's not super scary at this point. As long as he doesn't control my board too much by getting rid of all my creatures, we're fine. If your opponent is constantly blowing up your creatures, you're not going to be able to do that well. But generally, you'll see here that turn 4, I'm going to be able to sw hit Swing with Onota. And it's going to be very good. Or not swing with Winota, but swing while Winota's on the field. Now, you might have noticed here that I actually plussed up Chandra. And the reason I did that is because I need to make sure she's here for next turn for Winota. And I don't want him to be able to cast a bunch of spells and, like, boost up the power of his creature to then kill Chandra. Because if he's able to boost up his creature by just one more power, Chandra would be dead if he decides to attack her. And she is a very essential part. Um, so he does decide to hit her, but it doesn't end up mattering. Now, you'll notice I shock that in. I throw out Winota. And here I'm going to get three triggers. And look Look how devastating just three triggers can be. Agent of Treachery, stealing their only creature. Hakdos, to deal three dam six damage. Now, a lot of people may have said, hey, you probably want to take Agent of Treachery, steal a land, set them back. But I honestly think getting out Hakdos was probably the better move to just go for the win. Because now, if they don't have a two-cost removal spell, they're dead in two turns, assuming they kill literally everything else on my board, including Chandra. At this point, they pretty much can't win unless they can kill all of my stuff, and they can't. So I win. And that was turn four. So, maybe that was just a fluke. Let's move into the next game. So here we have Winota, we have Legion Warboss, and Chandra, which are all pretty good uh, tools. Now, th my deck does run Banishing Light, which I know a lot of decks that don't run any removal, but I found that this deck can win even if you pull it into the late game. It does reduce its odds of winning, but due to Agent of Treachery, it really anything can happen. But the fact that I can't remove things is just too devastating for the deck. So I do run a couple Banishing Lights, although those should really be used sparingly and even if they have a big threat, if you can survive to play Legion War Boss instead of Banishing Light, it's going to end up being worth it. Now, here, Satessin Champion is probably a big threat. It's going to let him draw cards. It's going to be a creature that's going to become too big for my creatures. And it may have been nice to let him get that big creature and steal it, but at this point... It's just not worth it. So you'll notice in this game, I'm playing a much more conservative approach in terms of not just rushing out. Now, he does end up with another Satessin Champion, so it's probably good that I killed his other one because otherwise he'd be getting a ton of value out here. Now, I decide to play Legion Warboss, which if he, like, decides to not block for some reason, can start generating excessive tokens, but it at least guarantees one Winota trigger while he's on the board, because he, I don't really care if the creature dies, because it has to attack. Now, he does start boosting up his thing with protection from black, um, I mean, I guess he wants both of his creatures to be big enough to swing, uh, which is fine. Now, I do get Winota, and I get two triggers of Winota, so I, I whiff on both of them, which is one of the worst things that can happen. And I mean, you might say, oh, my deck isn't built right, you shouldn't be able to look at the top 12 cards of your library and not hit a human, and that is fair, um, but you know, anything is possible. Now here you'll notice that he, like, I have to block, and so if he can throw out two more enchantments, I'm pretty close to dead. Now he plays Heliod, which is an enchantment, so 
at this point, he can swing with the Tessin champion and not worry about it, uh, and worry about me killing him, and now I have to block. Now, I decided to block the Tessin champion. It's a very risky move, because if he can boost up Apostle, um, you know, that could be bad, but I saw he was probably going to use Heliod, so I wasn't too concerned. Now, here, I do pull Chandra, and so here, I'm about to get four triggers of Winota, five triggers of Winota, um, and so I'm able to get Agent of Treachery to steal his big creature, I'm able to then steal his other creature, and then I'm able to steal Heliod, so now his entire board now belongs to me, and so even, and then I draw nine cards, because I did get, managed to get three Agent of Treacheries out, so now I have all this card draw, I have all these cards in my hand, and I'm gonna get a ton of triggers, and What's awesome about Agent of Treachery is if you steal a non-human, those non-humans can then trigger Winota. Now, he decides to play outside of Life's Bounty. I don't know if he thinks he can put out enough chump blockers or gain enough life or what he thinks is going to happen, or maybe he's trying to cast enough white spells for a quest. I don't know, but he decides to play out his hand and then concede. So, that one was a, a bit of a slower win, but... Yeah, so moving on to our next game, we have this hand which is... It's, uh, okay, I probably should have actually ditched a land, but the safety of knowing that, hey, I can cast Winota is very nice. Now, again, probably keeping Winota there may not have been the best decision, but at the time I was like, well, if they kill Winota, my entire deck is dead, which is one of the flaws of this deck, and honestly, I'm not playing against, like, super difficult opponents or super difficult decks. Now, here I do something kind of weird. I sacrifice one of my non-humans just to get rid of the zero, the 1-1, one, one, because that thing can get really big really fast if I'm not blocking, and it was going to be a new number of turns before I could not block, and then he would be able to put Winota at risk. Now, uh, here I end up discarding a land, which ends up dealing damage to me, but it's fine. He has now a cat combo, which is so annoying, although he doesn't really know how to use it, you'll see. Um, I mean, he knows how to use it, but uh, generally you want to wait till the cat is targeted with removal, just in case, but, you know, whatever. I then am able to get Winota out, now I'm going to be able to get one trigger with it, and I could throw out a Winota, which would then be attacking, but honestly, it's not worth it in my opinion. I mean, a lot of people would say, yes, you're supposed to do that, especially with another Winota in my hand. I just find it better to throw it on the bottom in case I do need it um, sometime in the future. Um, it just doesn't help me that much. It, it's four damage, yes, but not that useful um, currently. So then he's doing this whole cat combo twice per turn. He's going to, you know, oh, it's so annoying. Uh, generally, I probably would have actually swung with both and then done that. But, you know, whatever. I then get one trigger and get aided of treachery. And instead of stealing his creatures, I decide to st steal his oven. Now, if he was smart, I think he should have blocked with Cauldron Familiar uh, just to get rid of my only non-human. And then I could stop all of the triggers. Now here, I'm getting really, really, really close to being dead. Um, so next turn, he'll hit me for four, and he'll be able to cat combo once. But that's enough, because I'll be at five. So I have to leave open a blocker, or I can try and get lucky and try to steal his stuff using my one window to trigger. So again, this is an example of a game where maybe it didn't go exactly to plan. Maybe he did, like, get to actually play his deck, but his deck isn't actually that great. So I don't know how... How, what this shows, but either way, I try to do it, and I get this Sky Knight Vanguard, which isn't even that useful right now, um, but I do manage to get him down to 7 life, and I don't play a land for some reason, I don't know why I didn't play a land, but I didn't, um, I would have played Hollowed Fountain, but he decided to do this, and I decided, you know what, I need to sacrifice this for, to get a food, because that was my plan the whole time, was to get a food, um, and so I decided to sacrifice it, instead of letting him gain control of it, and then that food will let me survive his onslaught, uh, assuming he can't deal bonus damage to me, so I decided to do this in case he has some sort of trick or something, um, so now I'm at 8, so I should be able to survive this, even with his whole cat combo, now, I, looking at this, he can win next turn, right? Even if I don't block, he can win next turn because he's going to whittle me down to three, and then next turn he'll be able to sacrifice the 3-3. Three, three. So my only hope here is to be able to pull something to get rid of the 3-3. Three, three. And I actually decided to go for Hackdose because, well, guess what? Cauldron Familiar, his only blocker, is a one cost. And so Hackdose will guarantee not be able to be blocked by the familiar, and will then win me the game. 
So Hakdos ends up winning me the game there. So moving into our last game, we're playing against a deck that has Garuda as its companion, which is kind of scary. Now this hand has a lot of removal, not enough lands, and no Winota, so it's not a great keep. This hand has a ton of production of... Um, non-humans and it has a wonderful curve all set on turn one raise the alarm on turn two legion war boss on turn three and if i can pull one out to turn four that will be utterly devastating so um, you'll, you'll see here, so sometime between now and turn four, I need to draw Winota, and if I do, I've pretty much won the game, um, so he's doing his whole fabled passage thing, um, and so then, you know, swing, raise the alarm is instant speed, so if I do need to use that as an ambush, I can. Now, he's playing blue, which does kind of concern me, because, oh, he might counterspell my stuff, but maybe not, um, but yeah, um, by the way, I just want to spend this time to say how much I hate Garuda. First off, Garuda can technically be cast for just mono blue, and that is not a mono blue card. That is totally needs some black in there, uh, to do the whole resurrection thing. So the fact that you can cast it in mono blue is insane. But here, I draw Winota, turn four. So watch, I'm about to get all these triggers, and he concedes, which is generally what ends up happening. I probably would have won that. So that's all of the games I have for you today. But it, this was just supposed to be kind of a showcase to show you how powerful Winota is and how both good and bad games can go. Good games, I went on turn four by having this wonderful curve and then just getting to look at basically my entire deck and throw out six humans. And on the bad games, I just slowly whittle down my opponent and then just win. So that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.